Hi guys, in today's tutorial we're going to be painting up a Jackal Alphas from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me the box set out for review. If you check the description box below you'll find a direct link to their web store and every time you purchase something from that link it greatly helps directly funding my channel. So please use the link in the description box below if you are purchasing anything from Goblin Gaming. I tried my hardest to capture the look of the box art as I thought it looked absolutely wonderful. I've not managed to get it to look as good as those artists are top tier guys but I hope I've captured the essence of the box art and you can follow along with this tutorial and you'll be able to pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. Okay guys, this is going to be a long video as always, so please get comfortable, grab yourselves a nice hot drink or maybe an ice cold beer and we'll get started with the tutorial. After building the jackal, I actually start to place ballast on the base. I use super glue, you can use PVA glue but then you've got to wait a long period of time for it to dry and I find using super glue is just as good but it cures in an instant. After placing some of the ballast onto the base, we're now coming in with AK Interactive's Terrain's Wet Ground. Now, I'm going to hand prime, so that's why I had the opportunity to place the wet ground on first. But if you actually have to spray prime your miniature, it's best to do the base at last. Here you can see I'm using a very old brush to place on the wet ground and what I do after about 30 to 40 minutes of it drying a little I come in with a sponge and I just dab the sponge on the mud and this is going to leave even more great texture that's going to make it look like realistic mud. Here you can see I've let it dry a little and I'm just making more texture by dabbing the sponge onto the wet mud. Now I'm going to use the Army Painters Brush on Primer. I really like this primer for HQ minis and single minis. 
As I'm able to control the consistency of the primer on the miniature, it is more time consuming than spray priming, uh, but uh, you get great results so you can't complain. And here's what the miniature looks like after the primer had been applied. Now I'm going to create a mix with AK Interactive Still Water and AK Interactive's Field Drab. Now it's important to know that I don't like this AK Interactive Still Water. It shrinks on the miniature, it splits on the miniature and you can be left with some pretty terrible bubbles as well. Now I should have done my research a bit better before purchasing the product. Now. On hindsight I've now find out that there's a much better product on the market for still water and it's by Dulux materials and it's called aqua magic so I highly recommend you don't get the AK interactive still water and you uh, replace it with Dulux materials aqua water here you can see I'm just placing it on the uh, little crevices of the mud and this is going to create some really cool pool effects but I actually go over these pool effects later on with um, more of the wet mud because the effects just cracked unfortunately and it didn't leave a good end result and that's why I don't recommend AK Interactive's uh, still water but I do highly recommend the wet ground um, mud as it works fantastic Now we're going to start painting the bike and we're going to start by doing the metallics. We're going to be using Vallejo's Metal Color Gunmetal. I had a tiny amount of Vallejo Game Air Silver to the gunmetal just to lighten it a tiny bit. I really love these metallics. They go on super smooth and they're really thin so they never clog up any of the detail. This is a very complicated miniature to paint if painted assembled like I have. It's easier for me to do tutorials when the miniature is fully assembled as I don't have to remember to film sub-assemblies being painted. But if you are going to paint it, I do recommend sub-assemblies. And if you're going to paint it like me, work from the inner part of the miniature towards the outer part. So that's working on the inner frame of the bike first, the outer part of the frame and then working on the rider. Now we're going to paint the outer frame of the bike using Games Workshop Base Paint Corn Red. It's important to note that I always thin down my paints with a little bit of water. I work on a wet palette and this gives me a great opportunity to thin the paints down and make sure that the consistency is not going to clog up any details or leave brush stroke marks behind.
After allowing the corn red to thoroughly dry, I'm going to come in with Games Workshop's Shade Paint Carabao Crimson. It's important that you're very careful adding the shade and you make sure that you don't let it pull too much because this can drip onto other parts of the model or it can leave big stains behind. Now we're going to create some hard edge highlights using layer paint pink horror. This is a very bright uh, colour but I looked at the box art and it seemed that the uh, hard edge highlights were of a really bright pink colour and it actually works really well so again um, I tip my hat to the Games Workshop painters there, they do a great job with these uh, colour uh, designs on, on the vehicles and miniatures. On the box art there's a really cool strip of uh, like a, a dark, a light grey I should say, not dark grey. Uh, so I decided to use celestial grey and if you do just one white strip and then you go over the white strip with red, you'll be left with that really cool looking design. Here you can see I've gone a little bit too thick with the um, grey. So I'm going to come back in and tidy up that strip with some of the corn red. After I tidied up the line with some corn red, I'm coming in with Waz Daka Red by Games Workshop and I'm just creating some very thin lines. Now we're going to start painting the trousers of the rider and we're going to use the fang. Again I've thinned down the fang a little bit with water so it flows more smoothly over the miniature. Now we're going to wash the trousers using Norn Oil. I also painted the sleeves of the top that the riders wear in, in the fang as well and it also gets washed with Norn Oil. All the metallics as well get washed with Norn Oil. Mechanica Standard Grey is going to be painted on the boots and the shin guards of the rider. 
It's important to know that I wash the boots with Nornol after the Mechanica Standard Grey had thoroughly dried, but I washed it twice. This leaves a really nice deep shade on the boots and it looks really good. Now we're going to highlight the trousers and I use a 50-50 mix of Thunderhawk Blue and the Fang. What we're trying to do here is leave all the shade in the recesses and just highlight all the raised surfaces of the trousers. So as you can see here I'm trying to avoid all the recesses and just highlight using that 50-50 mix of the Fang and Thunderhawk Blue. Here you can see that I'm washing the boots with Norn Oil. It's important to note that I do it twice, so I let the first layer thoroughly dry and then I come back in with a second layer of Norn Oil. This will lead to a much deeper and smoother wash on the boots. Games Workshop Sandry Dust is going to be painted onto all of the pouches on the bike. There's a pouch on the back of the bike and then there's a, a roll of cloth on the front of the bike. Games Workshop's XV88 is painted onto the radio box uh, pouch on the bike. Games Workshop's Avalon Sunset is painted onto the petrol can on the side of the bike. Rakar Flesh is a fantastic colour to use for the Gene Stealer Colts as it's got a really pale complexion to it and it looks human but at the same time it looks a little off and that's what I think is key to make the skin tone look fairly realistic but something about it's not quite right Here I'm using Carabal Crimson to wash the skin. Again, if I was painting realistic flesh tones, I wouldn't use Carabal Crimson, but for the Gene Stealer Colts, it works fantastic. Now we're going to use the Army Painter's Soft Tone to wash all of the brown on the vehicle. So that's all the parts that were painted in XV88 and all the parts that were painted in Zandri Dust.
a shabti bone is going to be hard edge highlighted on all of the brown areas of the vehicle so that's the pouches on the sides of the vehicle um, and also as you can see here the gun holster The petrol can gets washed with Cassandori yellow. After the wash had thoroughly dried, I then come in with a hard edge highlight of Flash Gitch yellow. Here I'm placing PVO glue onto the base and then I'm going to be adding some static grass it's important not to go over the top because we still want to leave that really nice muddy texture behind I just want to break up the mud with a little bit of grass just to add a little bit of interest And here we have our finished Jackal Alphas. What a wonderful miniature this is. It really is. And I am very biased, guys, because I'm a huge fan of the hobby. But I think GEW are churning out some amazing miniatures at the moment. And they really are a joy to paint. Okay, guys, I just want to say a huge thank you once again to my YouTube channel sponsors, Goblin Gaming. I get a lot of messages from people saying, I found out about Goblin Gaming for you, and they're fantastic. Thank you very much for the recommendation. But if I can ask you all to use that link once purchasing uh, items from Goblin Gaming, it really does help. Okay, uh, so thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, guys. As I said at the start, I do hope you've learned a thing or two or you find it helpful. And I'll catch you in the next video.